I don't need anyone on my side. I'm not even concerned if God is on my side, as long as I am on his side. For God is always right. I don't have time for chronic quotes. Excuse me. Actually, that was Abraham Lincoln. Welcome to Ross Perspective. In this video, I speak with talented actor and bodybuilder, as well as a former winner of Mr. Syria, Laith Nackley, best known for his role as Uncle Nassim on Hulu's hit show, Rami, as well as The Wall, 12 Strong, and his recent work portraying Sheikh Abdullah in Ms. Marvel on Disney+. Plus. How did you get into acting? I always wanted to do it when I was a kid. You know, I grew up in, I don't know if you know that, I was born in the UK. I was born in Plymouth and I lived in Birmingham for 10 years. I was, uh, you know, I mean, I thought I was English. And then we moved to the Middle East when I was 10. And I've always wanted, I had the secret, you know, cause I was always into movies and stuff like that. So I always had, had the secret uh, uh, desire and dream to, to be an actor, but it's something that, you know, especially, uh, you know, when you grow up in the Middle East, it's something you don't even talk about because it's not an option. It's not a, uh, it's not a career choice. It's not like, you know, it's not a path that one would normally take. So um, I just kept it to myself when I, I moved to New York when I was 20. And, um, you know, I had a couple of very, you know, discouraging experiences when it came to acting and, and the pursuit of it. It made me believe and I was convinced that, um, you know, the only way to get into it is if you're born into it, you know? And, and uh, so I stopped. I stopped before I really even fully started. And then I did other things and uh, I got into sports and bodybuilding and I became a champion and, but it was just miserable. And one day when I was 29, I took an acting class because my friend, I was kept on talking about it. And my friend like I finally told me like, why don't you just go take an acting class, see if you like it. And I did, and I liked it, and, you know, then I found a uh, proper school and studied and uh, graduated 2003, and that's, you know, I never looked back at anything, so. So you mentioned the, the bodybuilding route. What made you get into that? I think mostly what got me into that is uh, uh, my own insecurity, you know. Um, um, I don't want to speak for everyone, but... It's a, uh, you know, bodybuilding when you, you know, you're building your body and you're controlling that. It's like, it's, I think it's a great sport for insecure people. I'm not saying that all bodybuilders are insecure, but um, it, it, was, it was great because I had control. Nobody can tell me what to do. I did it. I control my physique. I can have my shirt on, can have it off. I could do whatever. And uh, and then I started competing. Somebody noticed me, said, oh, you, oh, you should compete. And then I started competing. It was good. And. I went back to Syria for my first visit and became Mr. Syria and became famous there and, and opened a gym and had opportunities. But then I took that acting class and I'm like, nope, um, I think I'm going to just put it all all behind me. Yeah. So it's like you, you found your passion, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like the bodybuilding was just to prove that I can do something was, mm. was like when it got to competing, like, oh, I can be somebody. I put my mind to something. And that's actually something that I do when I put my mind to something. I don't, I have to fail hard for me to stop. You know, I won't stop at the first obstacle. Like even acting, acting was so, it's like an impossible thing. Like, you know, my graduating class, probably the three people out of 20 that are still acting today, you know? Oh, uh, wow. So it's a tough, you know, cause it's tough, tough business, tough, uh, uh, it's a tough choice to make. You play uh, Uncle Nazim in uh, Rami. Is it a little bit difficult to a degree to play someone that's, uh, particularly in the first season where he's a, a little bit more closed off about his personal life and he's quite, he can be quite sexist and uh, racist to Jewish people. Is, can, is that kind of difficult to play? Uh, well, first I'll say he's not quite sexist. He's very, he's sexist, oh, yeah. he's a yeah. misogynist, he's, 
anti-Semitic, homophobic. He's mm. he's everything, but he's he's human, and and these people exist. Baru, you have to lock the door. There are so many immigrants in this neighborhood now. Salam alaikum. Alaikum assalam. You guys say that, yes? Yes. Do you prefer this? No. I'm sorry. Who is this gentleman? To get an opportunity to play someone like that is so far removed from me, you know, is a great opportunity. And you always find ways to relate to, you know, because you you don't have to relate to an issue, but you can relate to a circumstance, you know, just like in season two with the with his secret that he holds that is revealed later on that explains more about him. Not, doesn't excuse him. It's not an excuse for behavior. And I can't say like, oh, well, that's what he's going through. So I understand it's okay that he's like this and that. No, it's not okay. But at least you understand where he's coming from. And, you know, so as an actor, you get to find ways. Okay, so I don't relate to that directly, but I can relate to having a secret, to holding on to a secret, to the pain of not being able to share a secret. <laughs> It's fun. It's, uh, you know, who wants to play themselves? I don't want to play myself. I'm, I'm a character actor, and I like to delve into uh, difficult, difficult things. Salams. Salams. Very cool. Very hip-hop. By season two, you really get to see his humanity, and then people, like, I feel like a lot of people, they hate him, but they, they just something about him that they're drawn to him, you know what I mean? And, like, that's why... You know, he became like a, a, a like one of the favorite characters. Everyone like, I have an uncle like you. I know someone like you. Everyone knows someone who's just like speaks their mind or blurts out things and and says inappropriate things. You know. Do you know what they did to that beautiful princess? Uh, I think she was in a car accident, right? It wasn't an accident. I mean, it was, but it wasn't. She fell in love with an Egyptian. That is not an accident. Then the queen murders them both, huh? Yeah. She'd rather kill a princess than see her be with an Arab. We know what happened, you know? It was on liveleaks.com. But yeah, at the same time, they're human and, and they're loved by certain people. So, um, yeah, that's so I enjoy, I enjoy, I enjoy playing that part. Did you know uh, during season one that uh, the character was gay or was that written in? like during season two um i didn't know and i don't think anyone really knew what happened was i think like i saw all the signs there were all these little nuggets you know what i mean his wife left him the homophobia the misogyny towards women all these things you know like okay what if he's closeted and and i had that thought and i was talking to rami and i was just let him know that um you know, if he goes with that storyline, um, I'm okay with it. And I'll explain why I'm saying I'm okay with it. It's just to, you know, to be controversial with that co comment. But, um, and he said, it's funny you say that because we've been throwing that idea in the writer's room. And so, well, let, let's go with it. And then they went with it. And the reason I say um, I was okay with it, telling him, because as an actor of, um, you know, Middle Eastern background, I know that when you make that choice to play a character like that, it's going to come with backlash, uh, not only for me, for my family and, and people and blah, blah, blah. And I just want to say that, you know what? I don't care. I'm okay with it. And there, were, there was some backlash, but it was minute compared to all the support and love. So, um, oh, that's good too. Yeah. 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 That's, that's what. When, when you kind of, when that was written in, did that kind of change the way you played him slightly? I think as any role, uh, you just have to commit to the circumstance. Once you commit to the circumstance and you just keep it simple and real and and internalize it, um, and if it's on the page, it will come across. And that's what we did, really, because that big episode, reveal episode in season two, was um, could have gone either way. It could have become like a caricature uh, piece, you know, and it could have been comical and or stereotypical or just like another person, you know, is in the closet or it could be very complicated and nuanced and 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 ha have a lot of depth. 
which it ended up having because we kept it really just we just towed that line and, and kept it kept it simple and kept it human i also wanted to talk about uh ms marvel um yeah that's so cool yeah uh so what what was that just that like like joining such a a huge thing now like the mcu what was that like it was fun man it was it was fun it was different you know it's not it's a completely different experience you know um really it's uh it's massive i mean that i mean that universe and and just being there in atlanta and sets and everything is so massive and um you know so used to having a contained set like rami you know we get to we all know each other and the the crew and every you know they the same people every year um but yeah it was it was a nice experience and you know the kids were lovely and uh, it was fun it was fun excuse me miss agent next time remove your shoes was it kind of like intimidating at all or was it just pure fun i don't think it was intimidating it was just like because the the you know the character was clear and he was fun and uh again just like just do it and commit to it i think the first moment the first scene we did when i was on a sitting given um um uh sitting on the minaret uh, on the you know you know, giving a sermon on the, at the mosque. Uh, uh, first scene we shot was just a little bit like, you know, just have to think about it a little bit because I knew that whatever I do there is going to set the tone for the character for the rest of my existence in the MCU, like for other series or if they yeah. use me in the films and stuff like that. So, and then once we did that and they were happy with it, it was just like, it just became like, just go in and have fun. <laughs> And it was really nice because they they would let me improvise and let me make the character Syrian. So I'd bring in some Arabic in there, you know, establish for the future. Maybe I'll have scenes with uh, Nakia in Arabic because she's half Lebanese in the, in the show. And so it, it was fun. They gave us gave us these freedoms, which was really lovely. Was it helpful having, because I know your, your co-star May um, was in Moon Knight. Was that was that kind of like a comforting thing like to have someone else that's kind of joined this big yeah, project it was, it was it was nice i mean i don't know it's not it was just a fun thing it's a great thing it's a it's a it's a you know i've known may since she was i think i don't know 1920 she just got out of school so we we're friends for that for a long time and we stayed in each other's lives and and then started working together and then we're getting these big things together so it was quite it's just a joy to see your friends and people you love, uh, uh, you know, find all the success. And then we're in the same universe and, and who know, who knows, maybe one day we'll clash together, you know, in, in the future, in one of the movies or something like that. So that's, that's fun. Uh, it's good. It, it, you know, so I was very happy for her. She did, she did so good. She was so great. So obviously Ms. Marvel has, uh, I guess it's like a huge cultural thing because it's like the first like MCU project that's, uh got like a lot of south asian heritage and uh you know portrays like islam and w what was that feeling like was that was, was that intimidating at all uh it, 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 i don't think it was intimidating but it was just it was a responsibility because you you now have this responsibility um, especially playing my character because he's, he's, you know, kind of an iconic and comic book favorite. And, and also, but at the same time, you have to make him, you know, make him real. And you have this responsibility of portraying um, um, our culture and all that stuff for the, for the, for the first time on this level, you know, um, so it's pretty big. It's like, it's like, I mean, if, if you told me five years ago that this was uh, going to get made, I'm like, please, it's never going to, nothing like this will ever get made. And and the responsibility that I feel all the time, and regardless of 
yeah I'm, I'm i'm a muslim but and regardless of of how i practice islam i have this responsibility along with many other muslim actors or not even just muslim actors a lot of middle eastern actors who are not muslim because um anyone who's middle eastern or anyone who is kind of brown or south asian you know they're all lumped into the same the same thing so they're all like believed to be muslim so when you do this you do this for everyone and and i feel this responsibility that we have to um represent islam in a, in, in a positive way because the religion has been demonized by the media by the west by everything you know when you talk about islam if you say uh uh what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you when you say islam somebody's going to say something bad you know you can ask anyone in new york and there's a big chance the first thing they'll say like 9 11. you know what i mean yeah. so they, they they won't say miss marvel they won't say uh you know something soothing or positive so and that's because of mostly the media and how uh muslims are also portray portrayed in in on tv and in films so yeah while yeah there are terrorists that are muslim they exist and but there are more terrorists that are not muslim for instance you know um so yeah that's that's the responsibility so it, it's it's important you know yeah yeah because i guess it, it's like that i guess it's the idea of almost like refreshing i guess of like like you said a lot a lot of the time it's like it's a negative portrayal mm -hmm. and and this is like overwhelmingly positive and yeah you know i mean i understand it i understand the media is very powerful the tv like look i when i 10 years i was living in syria i mean every time uh, you know all we know about the West, we had one TV channel and all we know about the West was from movies and what we hear from the local news over there. So, you know, and the local news and and, and, and the, the government with the propaganda, they always paint the West as like the enemy in a, in a negative way. And then you watch films, for instance, you watch, uh, you know, films and they portray, portray black people as criminals and Latinos as criminals and this and that and la la la. So that's what you watch. So when, even when I came to America, literally like, you know, they, you know, people who have never been to America, relatives, when they were saying goodbye, they would say, stay away from Harlem. You know, there's a lot of black people, they're dangerous, you know, or stay away from, you know, gay people because you'll get AIDS, things like that. But how do they mm -hmm. know all that stuff? They don't know it for a fact. They just, that's what yeah. they learn from the media. That's what they learn. So that's how powerful this medium is. So um, that's why it's a responsibility to to be part of a, a positive representation. Yeah, you play, is it Sh Shaker Dollar? Is that? Shaker Dollar, yeah, yeah. And like you said, he's a big, he's a big like comic book character. Um, had you read the comics before uh, you got the role? I did not. Um, I hate to say I I'm, I'm never was into comics, but when I was a kid, I was because, you know, uh, growing up in Syria, I was very much into pop culture. So anything I would, any anything I could get my hand on, like had to do with 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 pop culture, whether it's comic books, uh, videos, and magazines, I would have. So I used to read them then when I was a kid. But when I came to America, like you know, just living became uh, just its own struggle and took over, like trying to survive and make it here and do stuff. So, but I did read as many volumes as I could before. When I got when I got cast, I am now a hot dog. Let's hope this hot dog is halal. <laughs> did that? Did that like maybe change the way you thought you might play it? If that makes sense. Like, did you have a, an idea in your head, and maybe the comics changed it? Um, I really didn't. I mean, I just the one request I had is to make him Middle Eastern and not make not South Asian because I don't want to play. You know, it's not. I, I figured, like, you have me, you know, make the character uh, Middle Eastern, you know, and that was my only request. I don't, yeah, I don't, like, I don't think so far ahead because it just, in the end, I just try to simplify everything as much as possible when it comes to acting. I just really just, you know, here, it's on the page. And 
you make some choices and you commit to them and and just uh, go with it so particularly in that final episode there's um there's the big like uh, fight outside of the school that a lot of it's like cgi is it is it difficult like acting when most of what's going on will be done in editing I think in the beginning, it's like, it's just like a learning curve, you know, once you learn, you know, you just have to find the balance because what's the balance of, you know, you don't want to do too little, you don't don't want to do too much, you want to do the right amount, you know, and they, they would have little tricks to help guide you, they'll have flashing lights, they'll have this and that, they'll have things moving sometimes, but yeah, for the most part, it's, if there ever was anything that was difficult in the process it would have been it would have been that day that day because there were literally like you said there was like you know cars flying tanks flying this and that and blah blah and uh and we just had nothing we're just there a crowd and reacting what was it like when you got to see the the finished product of like those sorts of scenes like all come together with all the effects it was nice man it was like uh I've always wondered how you know these things come together and when you when you do them because i've never done anything like that before and um it, it was quite nice it was it was great at the opening at the premiere in, in los angeles they screened the first two episodes it was great seeing what it meant to the fans because i think i don't know i think 80 percent of the of the theater was just people fans who like won lottery tickets or whatever got to go see it and you see them it was just how much it meant to them and their reactions every time a character comes is introduced to go nuts they went wild even when Sheikh Abdullah was eh, they went wild and it was just <laughs> it was just great it was just uh it was so much fun watching their reaction to what was happening on the screen and what it meant to them yeah just back to Rami um obviously uh Mahershala Ali joined the show in season two what was it like getting to work with him Oh my God, he's one of the kindest human beings. Uh, like, I, I still remember when I first met him because I, I saw him and I went up to him. I said, uh, "Hello, uh, hi, Marshall. I'm, I'm I'm late. I play. You know, I, you know, I, I extended my hand. And he's like Uncle Nassim, and he just opened his <laughs> arms and hugged me, and and he just made everything so easy. That's the kind of person that he was. Like, you're amazing, and this and that. You're so complimentary, and then working together. It was just like that scene that we did in that episode when he came over and I, you know, I think episode seven was like a massive scene and, and we just, you know, kept on throwing things at him. Like Rami would whisper in my ear, oh, I'll improvise something that's so inappropriate and, and just his reactions to everything just gives you so much to work with. What prison did you convert in? Sorry, Sheikh. I... <laughs> We all battle our own stereotypes. He's just a joy, man. He's a professional, he's humble. And, you know, these are qualities that you aspire to, to be. So I aspire to be like that and stay like that. So he's really cool, man. And he elevates, you know, the scenes. He's just so good. So good, man. I mean, everything that he did, like, just building up, building up, building up, building up. And then you see that last scene that he has with Rami. It's just one of the most <laughs> incredible scenes, man. A nature that guided you to have sex with your cousin the night before marriage? Look, it, it's actually, it's my friend Mo's theory, and he explains it a lot better than me. Just... Fuck you, Rami! Fuck you! You little fuck! You little fucking boy! <laughs> fuck you, Rami! You hurt people! I saw you got a Ms. Marvel tattoo. Um, yeah, that was funny. Yeah. yeah. Whose idea was, was that to do? Oh, okay. So I was, um, so I think we were at a, like a rap, a rap, most of us are wrapped. And so there's a little party we got together and not an official party, you know, we had, because nobody was having anything official because of COVID, but we got together in our, you know, the compound that we lived in this, it's like, rooftop uh, area and 
and um, and then all the all the kids came in. They all got these little tiny Marvel like uh, tattoos, and they said, "Late." Yasmin said, um, "Yeah, you gotta get one." I'm like, "No, no, I don't want to get a tattoo." And and then no, you have to. And then I'm like, I'm like, okay, when we get season two, I'll get one. And it's not. And then they, you know, then they let it go. And then um, uh, Alicia, you know, who plays <clears throat> an agent in it, uh, you know, who I've known for many, many years, and she's around my age. She came in and she just got one, you know, and. So then they came late. Come on, she, you got to get one. I'm like, and then I went like an idiot. I'm like, well, I mean, it's ten o'clock at night. We're in the middle of COVID. I mean, there's no tattoo parlors open. If there was one open, I'll go get it. And they're like, you don't have to. We have a tattoo artist with us. They brought a <laughs> tattoo artist with them. So they they pinned me down and I did it. It was like very painful experience. I'm you know, as I got older, I became a wuss. And but I like it. It's in a nice spot. I like it, and it's pretty cool. If we get season two, I'll fill it in with some color.